Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is the difference between the average rate of change and the instantaneous rate of change. So let's say if you're given a function f of x is equal to x cubed. And the question asks, what is the instantaneous rate of change at x equal 1? The instantaneous rate of change is simply f prime of 1. You just got to find the first derivative and determine its value when x is 1. So first, let's find f prime of x. Using the power rule, it's simply 3x squared. So the instantaneous rate of change at x equals 1 is 3 times 1 squared, which is 3. This value represents the slope of the tangent line. Now, what exactly is that? So let's say if we graph x cubed. Let's focus on the right side. At x equals 1, which is probably around here, if we draw a line that touches the curve at one point only, that's a tangent line. The slope of that line is equal to 1. If you recall, slope is basically the rise over the run. You can calculate the slope by dividing the change in y by the change in x. So the slope of the tangent line at a point is the same as the instantaneous rate of change. So for this example, it's equal to 3. Now what about the average rate of change? What is the average rate of change between the points 0, 2, that is when x is 0 and when x is 2, and also, let's say, between 1.9 and 2.1? Notice what happens when you calculate it for these two different uh, for these two different intervals. Let's start with the first one. To find the average rate of change is simply f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So let's just call this average. So what is a and what is b? a is 0, b is 2. Now I do want to change this. I want to make that 0.9 and 1.1. But let's focus on this example. So we need to find f of 2 minus f of 0 divided by 2 minus 0. To find f of 2, we got to plug it into this equation. So that's uh, 2 to the third power minus 0 to the third power divided by 2. 2 to the third is 8. 0 to the third is just 0. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. So notice that the average rate of change is 4, which is close to the instantaneous rate of change. The instantaneous rate of change at x equals 1 is 3. So they're not too far apart. Notice that the midpoint between a and b, that is the midpoint between 0 and 2, is 1. Whenever that's the case, you can use the average rate of change to estimate the instantaneous rate of change. Now, 0 and 2 are not very, very close to 1. However, 0.9 and 1.1 are much closer to 1 than 0 and 2 are. And 1 is the midpoint of 0.9 and 1.1. As these two values approach this value, the average rate of change approaches the instantaneous rate of change. So let's calculate the average rate of change using these values. Let's see what's going to happen. So f of 1.1 minus f of 0.9 divided by 1.1 minus 0.9. So we're going to need a calculator for this. 1.1 raised to the third power is about 1.331. 0.9 raised to the third power is 0 0.729. 1.1 minus 0 0.9 is 0 0.2. 1.331 minus 0.729, that's 0 0.602, and if we divide that by 0 0.2, this is equal to 3.01. So as you can see, the average rate of change is very close to the instantaneous rate of change. Here's an example. Let's say that f of x is equal to x to the fourth power. What I want you to do is to estimate the instantaneous rate of change at 
x equals 2 using the average rate of change. So to use the average rate of change formula, we need two x values. So let's pick two x values that are very close to 2. Let's use 1.9 and 2.1. 1.9 and 2.1 are close to 2, and 2 is the midpoint of 1.9 and 2.1. You want to make sure it's right in the middle. So let's evaluate the average rate of change. It's going to be f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a, where a is 1.9 and b is 2.1. So this is equal to 2.1 raised to the fourth power minus 1.9 raised to the fourth power divided by 0 0.2. 2.1 to the fourth power, that's 19.4481. 1.9 raised to the fourth power, that's 13.0321. So let's go ahead and subtract those two numbers. You should get 6.416. And if we divide that by 0.2, we get 32.08. So the instantaneous rate of change is approximately about 32. Now to find the exact instantaneous rate of change, we need to find the first derivative. The derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. And now all we got to do is plug in 2. So that's going to be 4 times 2 to the third power. 2 to the third power is 8. 4 times 8 is 32. So the instantaneous rate of change is exactly 32. And this is an approximation. Now you might be wondering, why do we need to approximate it if we already have the function if we can already find the exact value using the function. Sometimes you may not be given the function. Sometimes you might have a table of values. And so you can't just find the derivative of a function when you don't have it. If you have a table of values, the only way you can get, the only way you can approximate the instantaneous rate of change is by using the average rate of change formula. So let's say if we have a table, let's say this table represents the distance that an object travels given a time. So at t equals 0, the distance traveled is 0. Five seconds later, the distance traveled is, let's say, 12 meters. Ten seconds later, the total distance traveled, 24.3. Fifteen seconds later, let's say it's about 37.1, 20 seconds later, 49.8, 25 seconds later, 76.1. So t is in seconds, and the unit for d is in meters. Estimate the instantaneous speed when t is equal to 15. So what is the speed of the object? at t equals 15. So here's 15. We have the distance. The speed is basically distance divided by time. So to find the instantaneous speed, we can estimate it using the average speed. And to find the average speed, it's going to be the distance at 20 minus the distance at 10 divided by 20 minus 10. So you have to use the average rate of change. The rate of change of distance is speed. Now we chose 10 and 20 because 15 is right in the middle of 10 and 20. You don't want to use 10 and 15 because that's going to give you the average speed at 12.5. And you don't want to use 15 and 20 because you're going to estimate the average speed at 17.5. I mean the instantaneous speed at 17.5. So if you want to get the estimate of the instantaneous speed at 15, use 10 and 20. Because 15 is the midpoint of 10 and 20, and out of everything that we have listed, 10 and 20 is closest to 15. We don't want to use 5 and 25, even though 15 is the midpoint of those values, because they're too far away from 15. 
So you want to use two numbers that where 15 is the midpoint, and at the same time, they're close to 15. So now let's go ahead and get the answer. So the distance at t equals 20 is 49.8, and the distance at t equals 10 is 24.3. 20 minus 10 is 10. So now let's subtract the two values. 49.8 minus 24.3 is about 25.5. And if we divide that by 10, this is about 2.55. And it's meters per second. Because distance was on top, which is meters, and the time was on the bottom, which is seconds. So you get the speed, meters per second. So the instantaneous uh, speed is approximately about 2.55. That's the average speed, but the instantaneous speed should be somewhere around 2.5, 2.6.